Hello, everyone. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, one type of experiment today. It's called switchback experiment. Um, so first, a uh, little bit about myself and uh, the company I'm working at now. So my name is Yimin. Um, I'm a sen senior data scientist at Shift. I hold a PhD degree in economics. So Shift is a same day delivery platform. So we serve all customers for grocery and household essential delivery um, in as soon as one hour. So we have our shipped drivers or shoppers will help us to deliver orders to your door. And we are available to 80% of household in more than 5,000 US cities. So this is the agenda for today's talk. So first I will talk about what is switchback and why we want to um, run switchback experiments. Then I will talk about um, the first component that is how do we design and, and switch back experiment? So what are the steps and how we decide, uh, you know, how long we are going to run experiment. And then I will talk about analysis. So after we have done the experiment, how can we analyze uh, the switch back experiment and conduct statistical inference? And at the end, I would be happy to answer any questions. So first, what is a switchback experiment? So I don't know how many of you have heard about like A-B testing. So this is a very common technique that are used in uh, tech companies to try to evaluate some new uh, you know, product, new design, new algorithm. So the typical way is like, okay, we randomly assign, uh, you know, like 50% of our customers, our users, or like whatever, like, you know, like unit uh, into uh, either treatment or control. And then we measure some outcomes. And then um, for a certain um, time period, then, after the experiment, we compile uh, outcomes between the treatment group and the control group. So a switchback experiment is different from an A-B test in the way that how we randomize. So as you can see from this table, in a switchback experiment, instead of randomize uh, on user or customers, we randomize, uh, we randomly assign uh, a couple of uh, geographic unit here, for example, zoom uh, into either treatment or control um, for a couple of days. Here we have, uh, you know, for example, here we have day one for zoom one, we run the assign it to treatment, but for day two and day three, uh, we assign it to uh, control. So, so this is the uh, biggest difference between uh, switchback experiment and A-B test. So one note here. So we've seen a certain uh, geo time unit here, for example, a certain Zoom day, we may be interested in some metrics that are defined at a certain level that is either you know, at the geo time level or maybe granular than the geo time level. So we may be interested in, um, you know, some metrics defined at the user level or at the custom level, shop level, or even all the level. So with in a certain uh, randomization unit, we may have multiple analysis unit. So this is very important because this will dis uh, de decide how we are going to conduct power analysis and conduct uh, analysis at the, uh, after we have done experiment. So why we want to run switchback experiment? Uh, the answer is like, okay, 
because we couldn't run a b test. So there are multiple reasons why we couldn't run a b test. So the first reason is we may not be able to randomize at a fine enough green. So what does it mean? So in A-B test, we need to run the new assign customers, users, uh, you know, shoppers uh, into treatment and control. But it's just not possible for some specific questions we want to answer. And the second uh, reason is uh, there may be concerns about network effect. So for example, in a three study marketplace as shipped, so, you know, uh, customers are interconnected by shoppers because, you know, in each metro or zone, uh, a certain group of shoppers will serve all the customers. So if you want to change something, you know, for uh, a specific region, like, you know, uh, for a certain percentage of customers or shoppers, you know, this may also impact, you know, other group of shoppers or uh, customers. And in a social network like LinkedIn or like Facebook, you know, um, so if you want to randomly assign, you know, a group of uh, users into treatment control because of the interconnection across social network. So uh, users or customers in the treatment group may impact um, customers in the control group. This is also a network effect. And there may be some other reasons we couldn't run a test. So that's uh, why we want to run a switchback test. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about how we can design a switchback experiment. So uh, to design a switchback experiment, we need to answer a couple of questions. So first, as I said, because of randomly assigned geographic unit, so we need to decide what geographic granularity should we choose? We could randomly assign metros, zooms, or stores, or states into treatment and control. So which one should we choose? And the second question is, okay, um, because we are trying to randomize, you know, um, for a certain time period. So what time granularity should we choose? Should we randomize at the day level or at the week level? or hour level or minutes level. And so the third question is, okay, so if we decide on the first two, so how long we are going to run a switchback experiment? And the question is, okay, how can we conduct simple uh, sets calculation for switchback experiments? And last one is what kind of randomization strategy should we choose? We have a know a lot of options we have paired strategy and paired strategy i'm not going to talk about it today so this is a high level overview of a switchback experiment design so the first step we need to decide the geographic granularity the basic consideration here is uh, we will choose the most granular geographic unit that cross region interference is negligible. What does it mean? So if we want to randomize at the zoom level, but we, if we think, okay, so this zoom um, may have some impact in some labor zooms through the connection of, you know, shoppers or like, you know, customers. So then this may not be um, a good um, geographic unit we can randomize. So we have to go up to, for example, metro level. And so the second step is, okay, so we, de we choose, we need to decide the time granularity. So here, um, the consideration is, okay, we need to get a sense of the order of carryover effect. So what is carryover effect? Carryover effect is, okay, so if we randomly assign this metro uh, into treatment today, is the treatment status going to impact the metrics we are interested in tomorrow? So, you know, if the answer is yes, then probably we need to think about, okay, so yeah, then it will impact uh, the comparison we will conduct at, at the end of the experiment. So here we need to think about this. And after we have decided the geographic and the time granularity, then 
and we can and we are have you know a couple of regions available for the experiment then we need to conduct power analysis and decide okay how many days we are going to run for this experiment and the last step is okay we select randomization strategy so uh, we have a couple of options okay so um i'm going to talk about uh, the very important question for switchback experiment design so that is how we conduct power analysis so um here uh, we are considering two categories two scenarios here so as as mentioned in the beginning so in a switchback experiment uh, we may have uh, you know analysis unit that is maybe the same as the randomization unit but more typically it's uh, you know more granular than the randomization unit so if the first case if it's the first case so we can conduct power analysis as in a typical IB test that is based on two sample t test but the more more interesting case is when we have the analysis unit for example we have the analysis unit is at all the level but we have a randomization unit at metro day level and for each metro day we have you know multiple orders so here we need to take into account the correlation across multiple orders within the same metro day so well, how can we do that so we can use delta method to um, kind of aggregate these orders into the randomization unit uh, for various calculation. And uh, the main insight from here is that, like, okay, so in a switchback experiment, if we have an analysis unit at all the level, so the simple sides, the output of the simple side um, calculation is not oh, how many orders do we need, is that how many randomization unit namely how many metro days do we need to run experiments okay so that's the design part um so after we have done experiment then comes the question how we analyze the experiment so to analyze the switchback experiment these are also some very important questions to answer so first how can we calculate the treatment effect and second um, how can we conduct statistical analysis and claim whether the treatment effect is statistically significant or not? And the last one is like, okay, if we are going to uh, look at heterogeneity, so how can we look for heterogeneous treatment effect? So in the analysis part, uh, we divide uh, treatment effect into two levels. So first is the overall treatment effect, and the second is heterogeneous treatment effect. So heterogeneous treatment effect may be, you know, across different metros, uh, across some time dimensions, like uh, the day of week, and maybe some other dimensions. So as you can see uh, in this table, this is a typical uh, date we can get for a switchback experiment. Here we have the analysis unit that is at all the level, and we have our randomization unit. We run the enzyme zoom uh, into either treatment or control across different days, and we have our matrix of interest, and we have treatment status in on the final column. And we may be interested in heterogeneity across different metros. So we also have information of metro. So the oral treatment effect is the difference in the average treatment, uh, the average metric between uh, treatment orders and the control orders. So if we are going to look at heterogeneous treatment effect um, across different metros, so we can, for example, um, if you look at San Francisco, then the treatment effect is uh, the average in the metric between um, treatment orders and the control orders for all orders in San Francisco. So that's how we can define, um, you know, the overall treatment effect and the heterogeneous treatment effect. Then comes the question: How do we 
you know, conduct statistical analysis inference. So this is also, we have two cases here. Um, as we said before, if our analysis unit is the same as the randomization unit, we can just do a two a sample t-test or permutation test. But here maybe there are some concerns about the serial correlation or some other issue because of its uh, time series data set. So we may want to try some more advanced modeling. And for the second case, if our analysis unit is more granular than the randomization unit, then this, uh, you know, as we say, as I said before, so because uh, we see the same randomization unit, we may have multiple uh, analysis unit. So we need to take into account correlation among uh, orders within the same metro day. So we, so how can we do that? We can still apply the data method for the various calculation, and then we can conduct a two sample Z test. But we can also apply permutation test, and we can also explore some more advanced modeling techniques. So that's how um, we can analyze switchback experiments.